It was a bullet that could laugh. The moment it hit the man, a fragment shot directly into his brain. But instead of dying, the man started laughing uncontrollably. Even after being taken to the hospital, he continued to laugh. Then something even stranger happened. The man's fingers began to spasm, and his vision rapidly deteriorated until he was completely blind. Next, his heart rate skyrocketed and his wounds started bleeding. To the doctor's surprise, Dr. Foreman, who was nearby, also began laughing uncontrollably. They then realized it might be an unknown infectious disease. Foreman mentioned that he had visited the man's home to investigate the cause of the illness, so the virus might have been transmitted to him at that time. Soon the man's condition began to deteriorate rapidly, with his pain levels increasing sharply. House believed this was a case of hyperalgesia, indicating that the virus had spread to the pain nerves in the man's brain. Looking at the dead man in the hospital bed, Foreman seemed to see his own impending fate. In the end, House decided to take a risk and search the man's home for clues. On the balcony, he found a blind pigeon. When he climbed onto the roof, he discovered a foul-smelling pool. After taking a sample and testing it, he found it was filled with neglaria. Foreman was the man said that every time he performed a magic trick, his nose would bleed. The doctor didn't believe him. The man asked the doctor to pick a card. The doctor randomly chose the six of spades. He then watched closely, wanting to see how the man would reveal the card. Unexpectedly, the man suddenly smashed the entire deck against the glass door. Only the jack of hearts stuck to the glass. House immediately sneered saying that wasn't the card he had chosen. But just as he finished speaking, the six of spades appeared behind the jack of hearts. Even more astonishing, the card somehow ended up in a gap between the double-layered glass. Meanwhile, the man suddenly started to have a nosebleed. The doctor doctor arranged an MRI scan for him, but unexpectedly as soon as the doctor started the machine, the man began screaming in pain. The doctor quickly turned off the machine and lifted the man's shirt, revealing a purplish red patch on his left abdomen. This indicated that the man was bleeding internally. However, after searching for a long time, the doctors couldn't find any source of internal bleeding. They all thought the bleeding might be due to a chronic condition, but House insisted on taking the man to the operating room to have an exploratory surgery, and instead of looking for a bleeding point, he started feeling around inside the man's abdomen. While everyone was puzzled by his actions, he suddenly pulled out a key from the man's stomach. The school bus had a severe accident. A large amount of steel bars flew into the bus. Two students were pinned to their seats. A steel bar pierced through the girl's abdomen and came out through the boy's neck because they were so close together. The firefighters couldn't cut the bar in the middle. He suggested separating the two a bit, but the doctor quickly stopped him. The girl had already lost too much blood and was about to go into shock. If they moved her further, her blood vessels would tear even more. There was only one way, and that was to cut off the rear part of the steel bar and send both children to the hospital together. When they arrived at the hospital, they they found that the steel bar had pierced the boy's carotid artery, and the girl had suffered kidney damage. At this point, the girl had completely lost consciousness. Seeing that the girl's life was in danger, the doctor had no choice but to ask the boy to endure, and then removed him from the steel bar. A mass compressed his trachea, making it hard for him to breathe. The doctors urgently performed a tracheostomy. At that moment, the boy's parents arrived. They asked why the two children were not separated on the spot. The doctor had to explain to them that the girl's injuries were too severe at the time, and she couldn't sacrifice one child to save the other. Wait, so you endangered our son? You have no right to make it. A couple brought 800,000 fans with them to the hospital. The doctor told him to turn off the live stream, but the man said his fans wouldn't allow it. The doctor asked him to sit down for an examination, but in the next second, the man asked his fans if they agreed with him sitting down. The answer was no. The doctor was very angry and was about to leave. Just then, the man felt a sharp pain in his abdomen. The examination revealed that the man had appendicitis. The doctor recommended immediate surgery to prevent a rupture. At that moment, a viewer asked, is there another treatment? The doctor reluctantly said that antibiotics could be used, but the best option was surgical removal. By this time, the man was in unbearable pain, but 80% of the viewers voted for him to take medication instead. The man's appendix was on the verge of perforating, and it would rupture soon. The doctor told him to undergo surgery immediately. At this point, the wife we said, We just hit a million followers! We're going viral! The man excited, decided to go with antibiotics after all. He didn't want to disappoint his viewers to make him face reality. The doctor pushed the man onto the rooftop and told him to ask the viewers whether he should jump off the roof. Please comment if the viewers would vote yes or no, the girl had just been However, the doctors in the operating room were worried for the perpetrator because they found a strange object from the girl's stomach. Dr. Burke hadn't recognized it yet, but in turn, Gray's eyes widened. Oh my god. What? Spit it out, Gray. She bit it off. Bit off what? That his that made the doctors mumble in disgust. No wonder the girl's abdomen was severely injured. She had confiscated the weapon used by the criminal. Dr. Gray needed to take it with her, since all medical evidence must stay with the person who collected it until it is placed into police custody. The other interns, upon hearing this, couldn't help but come to take a look. Talk about taking a bite out of crime. A few hours passed. A man whose clothes were soaked in blood came to the hospital and then collapsed. Seeing the area where he was bleeding, Dr. Bailey confirmed he was the one who had harmed the girl. But due to the uneven teeth marks and the erosion from saliva, the active muscle tissue was almost gone, so they couldn't attach it back. Only a hemostatic suture. For a long time afterward, he would have to live with a urine bag attached. Bad, Shane. Let's all take a moment to breathe.
The man weighing 600 pounds died at home. Six firefighters tried to carry him out, but they faced a dilemma. They agreed to count to three and live together. However, they exchanged glances, yet no one admitted it. At that moment, they suddenly realized there was another person there, which startled them greatly. The captain approached the man, listened to his heartbeat, and then reached into his pants to feel around. Only then did they realize the man was still alive. In the end, they transported him to the hospital, through a hole smashed in the wall. Strangely, despite the doctor's various attempts, they couldn't wake the man. The doctors even suspected a stroke or brain death, so they decided to do a brain CT scan. Suddenly, the man woke up. The narrow space made him struggle intensely, and expect the expensive MRI machine was thus destroyed. At this point, the doctors were certain the man had a serious problem. However, the man didn't care at all. He had only two requests. First, to eat because he was very hungry. Second, to be discharged as soon as possible. Yet before he could leave the hospital, something went wrong again. He suddenly passed out again, lost his balance, smashed the glass door behind him. For those who enjoy outdoor activities, be careful. Just now, a girl returned from the wilderness. Suddenly, she collapsed to the ground. The doctor carried her to a bed. After testing, it was found that the girl had only faint sensation in her legs, and she could barely lift them a little. However, all examination reports showed normal results. At this moment, the girl suddenly began to breathe rapidly, and she lost feeling in her hands as well. Her mother was terrified. The doctor told her that the paralysis seemed to be spreading upward towards her spine. Dr. Halstead, who had first come into contact with the girl, also started feeling a numbness in his his legs. The next second, he collapsed to the ground. Then another doctor pricked his foot with a needle, but he didn't react at all. After repeatedly recalling, they all pointed to the girl he had first come into contact with. Could the girl's illness be so highly contagious? Later when the doctors entered the girl's room, they found that her deep tendon reflexes were back to normal and asked her to try walking. She had completely recovered. Dr. Manning in his excitement seemed to realize something. After checking the MRI report, she started searching through Dr. Halstead's hair. A tiny tick was found. The girl had been bitten by a tick. The tick had jumped onto his body during the contact. One day a boy suddenly took his little brother to the front of a mountain and said to him, do you want to move the mountain? Move it? The innocent little boy firmly believed he could perform magic. Seeing the boy's ridiculous efforts, the other children laughed at him, but just then, The mountain seemed to actually be moving. The next day, when the mother was reading the newspaper, she discovered that it was just an earthquake by coincidence. From then on, the little boy was deeply convinced of his own magic. So he began casting spells towards Japan, hoping the war would end and his father would return home soon. Day after day, he persisted without fail. More and more people learned about it. Then one day on his way to cast another spell, everyone shouted to him, you did it. The greatest power known to man has been unleashed. Yesterday at 5.15 our time, Hiroshima was destroyed by the force of the atomic bomb. Codename, Little Boy. The man just came to the hospital for a checkup, but he scared the intern doctor into screaming loudly. Go away! Sorry. Because he had hands that looked like those of a tree creature. The examination revealed that Jerry had been exposed to human papilloma virus, which had mutated and caused warts to grow. Combined with Jerry's immune deficiency, the warts spread all over his body. He had been too many hospitals because of this. At that time, the hospitals only performed removal procedures, but the warts grew back even more aggressively. The doctors said each wart had its own blood supply system and could only be cut and stitched one by one. With skin grafts to be done later for recovery, Jerry thought that was no help, but his wife Tess insisted on him undergoing going surgical treatment. After all, the couple hadn't had a normal life for years during surgery. Suddenly, a spider crawled out from the man's foot. Dr. Bailey screamed in fright. In the end, the surgeons removed a total of 12 pounds of warts from the man's body. The doctor told Tess they needed to perform the surgery in stages. The skin grafts were for later, maybe six months to a year. Tess said she loved him, but she needed to live a life. In the end, the doctor watched Tess kiss her husband goodbye.